Hey everyone, Michelle here, and welcome to Psych for Psych. Today we're going to step in the shoes of a biological psychologist to learn more about neural processing, the basis of which is the neuron. A neuron consists of four main parts, dendrites, the cell body, axon, and terminal branches. Dendrites are the starting point of each neuron. For the record, our bodies are made up of millions of neurons that carry chemical messages, also called neurotransmitters, from each cell in the body to the brain and back again. Dendrites receive these neurotransmitters from the last neuron's terminal branches. The message is then passed to the cell body where it's processed. The cell body then carries the information, now in the form of an electrical charge, to the axon. The axon is a long cord-like part of the neuron. Around the outside, it's wrapped in something known as the myelin sheath. The myelin sheath helps not only protect the cell from deterioration, but it also helps speed up the process of this message. Basically, the axon is just like a slide. Pretend a little kid, now going down the slide, is the electronical charge sent throughout the axon. The opening within the slide is the axon, whereas the plastic around the outside is the myelin sheath. Each action has a threshold for response, which means you need X amount of charges in order to get an action. This might be a physical reaction, such as your arm pushing you down the slide, or it might be simply to carry the message on to the next neuron. At the end of the axon, the charge hits the terminal branches and is changed from the electronical charge to neurotransmitters. Now comes the jump from the terminal branches of one neuron to the dendrite of another over an area known as a synapse. The neurotransmitters bind to receptor sites on the next neuron's dendrite and then in a process known as reuptake, return to the former neuron. If all's good and well, this process will occur with the next neuron. But sometimes a chemical substance might get in the way, whether it's caffeine, a psychoactive drug, cold medicine, or something of that nature. If the chemical mimics the neurotransmitter and takes its place in the receptor site on the next dendrite, then it's known as an agonist. But if it blocks the neuron completely, stopping the neurotransmitters from reaching the next dendrite, then it's called an antagonist. So let's talk about the main chemicals in the brain. First off, there's dopamine. This chemical is linked to emotion, movement, learning, and pleasure. If you have a deficiency in dopamine, you most likely have schizophrenia. The next endorphin that's most commonly known is serotonin. Serotonin affects mood, hunger, and arousal. If you have a deficiency in serotonin, you may suffer from depression or an eating disorder. Acetylcholine is another chemical that allows for learning, muscle movement, and memory. When the neurons that produce this chemical deteriorate, then you have Alzheimer's. Now all these neurons are connected within the body. They might be sensory neurons, which connect organs to the brain, or motor neurons, which connect tissue to the brain, or it may be an inner neuron, which connects the motor and sensory neurons. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and look out for the next biological psychology video. Bye!